All right, folks, let's talk about concrete. Not just any concrete, but strong concrete. The kind that can hold up buildings and bridges. That's where compressive strength comes in. It's the muscle of concrete. Think of it as how much squeeze concrete can take before it gives up. It's like arm wrestling with a building. The concrete that can resist the most pressure wins. Now, why do we care about this? Simple. We want our structures to stand tall and proud, not crumble like a cookie. Compressive strength tells us how much load concrete can bear. It's the difference between a building that lasts for decades and one that's a disaster waiting to happen. In the construction world, it's our way of saying, yeah, this will do the job. But it's not just about big buildings. Compressive strength matters for your driveway too. It's what keeps it from cracking under your car's weight or that patio you're planning. You want it to hold up under summer barbecues and winter snow. That's all about compressive strength. It's the unseen hero in every concrete structure around us. Let's put it in everyday terms. Imagine you're squeezing a stress ball. The harder you squeeze, the more it resists. Concrete's the same way. The stronger it is, the more it pushes back against forces trying to crush it. That's compressive strength in action. It's what lets skyscrapers reach for the clouds and bridges span mighty rivers. Without it, we'd be living in a very different world. One with much shorter buildings and a lot more worry about what's over our heads. Now, how do we figure out if our concrete is tough enough? We put it to the test, literally. We make cylinders of concrete, standard size, nothing fancy. Then we wait. Yep, waiting is part of the process. We usually test at seven days and 28 days after pouring. Why? Because concrete gets stronger over time, like a fine wine, but without the hangover. At the magic moment, we bring out the big guns, a hydraulic press that would make any gym rat jealous. We put our concrete cylinder in this machine and start applying pressure. More and more until crack the concrete gives. That breaking point, that's our compressive strength. We measure it in pounds per square inch, PSI, or megapascals, MPA. It's like a report card for our concrete. But here's the kicker. We don't just do this once and call it a day. Oh no, we test multiple samples. Why? Because concrete can be moody. One batch might be slightly different from the next. By testing several, we get a more accurate picture. It's like taking the average of your kid's grades. One bad test doesn't tell the whole story. Now you might be wondering, Mike, why all this fuss? Can't we just eyeball it? Trust me, I've seen what happens when people cut corners. It ain't pretty. This testing tells us if our concrete is up to snuff. It's how we know a foundation will hold a house or a bridge won't collapse under rush hour traffic. It's not just numbers on a page, it's peace of mind. It's knowing that when we say a job's done right, we mean it. And in my book, that's worth every cylinder we break. Let's talk recipe. Not for cookies, but for strong concrete. Like any good recipe, it's all about the ingredients and how you mix them. First up, the mix design. That's your ratio of cement, water, sand and gravel. Get this wrong and you're in trouble before you start. Too much water? Your concrete's weak. Not enough? It won't pour right? It's a balancing act, folks. Next, let's talk about curing. That's concrete speak for letting it dry properly. You can't rush this. It's like trying to cook a turkey in 10 minutes. It just doesn't work. Concrete needs time and the right conditions. Too hot, too cold, too dry. Any of these can mess with your strength. We're talking about babysitting your concrete, keeping it moist at the right temperature. It's fussy, but it's worth it. Now, let's not forget about the quality of your materials. You wouldn't build a house with rotten wood, right? Same goes for concrete. Your cement, your aggregates, they all need to be top notch. Using subpar materials is like trying to win a race in a broken down car. It's not gonna happen. And age, yeah. Concrete gets better with time. It's still gaining strength months, even years after it's poured. It's the Benjamin Button of construction materials. But here's something folks often forget. How you handle the concrete matters too. Overwork it while it's setting and you'll weaken it. It's like overmixing cookie dough. You end up with tough cookies. With concrete, you end up with weak structures. And don't get me started on adding water on the job site to make it easier to pour. That's a big no-no. It's like watering down your coffee to make more. Sure, you've got more, but it's not as good. In concrete, that extra water can seriously hurt your strength. Remember, in concrete mixing, less is often more. Treat it right, and it'll do its job for years to come. 
Section 4, Safety First, Why Compressive Strength Matters. Now let's get down to brass tacks. Why do we care so much about compressive strength? It's all about safety, folks, plain and simple. When we build something, whether it's a skyscraper or a garden wall, we need to know it'll stand up. Not just today, but for years to come. Compressive strength is our crystal ball. It tells us if our concrete can take what life throws at it. Think about it. Every time you step into a building, drive over a bridge, or park in a garage, you're trusting the concrete beneath you. You're betting your life that someone did their homework on compressive strength. It's not just about avoiding catastrophic failures, though that's a big part. It's also about longevity. Strong concrete lasts longer. It resists wear and tear better. It stands up to the elements like a champ. But here's where it gets really interesting. Compressive strength isn't just about holding up weight, it's tied to other important properties too. Stronger concrete often means more durable concrete. It's better at keeping water out, which means less corrosion of the reinforcing steel inside. It's more resistant to freeze-thaw cycles, which is huge in colder climates. In short, understanding compressive strength helps us predict how concrete will behave in all sorts of situations. And let's not forget about efficiency. When we know exactly how strong our concrete is, we can design structures more precisely. We don't have to overbuild just to be safe. That means less material, less waste, and often less cost. It's about building smart, not just strong. In my years in the business, I've seen how getting this right can make or break a project, literally. That's why I never cut corners on testing. It's not just about meeting code. It's about sleeping well at night, knowing we've done everything we can to ensure safety. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters most. Not how fancy a building looks, but how well it protects the people inside. Section 5, from PSI to Pascal's, a simple conversion guide. All right, let's tackle something that trips up a lot of folks, converting between PSI and Pascal's. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mike, why do we need to bother with this? Well, in our global world, we've got to speak the same language. And in construction, that often means converting between units. PSI is common in North America, while the rest of the world mostly uses Pascal's. So let's break it down. First things first, PSI stands for pounds per square inch. It's exactly what it sounds like. How many pounds of force are applied to one square inch? Pascal's, named after the French mathematician Blaise Pascal, is the metric system's way of measuring pressure. One Pascal is actually pretty small. It's about the pressure of a dollar bill resting on a table. That's why we often use kilopascals, KPA, or megapascals, MPA, when talking about concrete. Now here's the magic number you need to remember. One PSI is about 6.895 kPa. Or if you prefer to work with MPA, one PSI is about 0.006895 MPA. I know, it's not a nice round number, but that's life in construction. Sometimes you've got to deal with the numbers you're given. To convert from PSI to KPA, you multiply by 6.895. Going the other way? Divide by 6.895. It's that simple. Let's put this into practice. Say you've got concrete with a compressive strength of 4,000 PSI. Pretty standard stuff. To convert this to MPA, you'd multiply 4,000 by 0.006895. That gives you about 27.58 MPA. Or if you prefer KPA, it's 27,580 KPA. See? Not so scary. And here's a pro tip. Most smartphones have calculator apps that can handle these conversions for you. No need to carry around conversion tables anymore. Just punch in the numbers and you're good to go. Remember, in this business, accuracy matters. A small mistake in conversion could lead to big problems down the line. So, take your time, double check your work and when in doubt, ask someone to verify your calculations. Section 6, putting it all together, practical applications in engineering. Now that we've got the basics down, let's talk about why all this matters in the real world of engineering and construction. It's not just about impressing folks at cocktail parties with your concrete knowledge. Understanding compressive strength and being able to convert between units is crucial in practical applications. It's about building structures that are safe, efficient and up to code, no matter where you are in the world. 
Let's say you're working on an international project. The local engineers give you specs in MPA, but your team back home is used to PSI. Being able to convert quickly and accurately means you can communicate effectively. It prevents misunderstandings that could lead to costly mistakes. Or imagine you're comparing different concrete mixes. One supplier gives you strength in PSI, another in MPA. Being able to convert lets you compare apples to apples, making sure you're getting the best product for your needs. But it goes beyond just communication. Understanding these units and how they relate to real-world performance is key to good design. When you're calculating load-bearing capacities, every number matters. A miscalculation here could mean the difference between a structure that stands for generations and one that fails prematurely. It's about knowing not just the numbers, but what they mean in practice. And here's something else to consider. Codes and standards. Different countries have different requirements. In North America, you might see specifications in PSI. In Europe or Asia, it's likely to be an MPA. Being fluent in both means you can work anywhere, understand local regulations, and ensure your projects meet or exceed standards no matter where you are. It's about being a global professional in an increasingly connected world. Remember, in engineering, there's no room for close enough. Precision matters. Whether you're building a backyard patio or a highway overpass, getting the numbers right is non-negotiable. That's why we take the time to understand these concepts and conversions. It's not just about passing a test or meeting a spec. It's about building a world that's safe, durable and built to last. And that, folks, is what good engineering is all about.